now proclaim Kamala Harris of the Whorehouse Bannister, first of her skin color, queen of locking up black men, heels high protector of the intelligence kingdoms. The last time you were on the program, Mike, you talked about how Boris Yeltsin was run as a fake candidate through CIA press. And the CIA went into Russia. And this is amazing. I didn't actually know this story. It blew my mind. How the CIA and our intelligence uh, uh, infrastructure propped up a drunk and diseased Boris Yeltsin in order to run him when he wasn't, when he was totally and completely incapacitated. You were talking about this in the terms of Joe Biden, but now it seems like that has actually been more smartly applied to Kamala Harris, who no one has seen for 25 days, 25 days, no press, no media, no answered questions, nothing. Yet she miraculously is rising in the polls based entirely on propaganda and an immediate infrastructure that it seems to be like finely tuned into giving like the perfect message to the voters about this fake candidate. Now you predicted that you said that this has already been run. They already have this infrastructure. They're just going to apply it here in America in 2024 to the democratic side. You still agree with that? I still do. And I, and I think that they are afraid of a, a Biden debate night moment. I mean, frankly, you know, I, I think this is the most impactful debate in United States history. I mean, I, I've never seen a debate just completely end uh, a candidate's presidency. And the fact is, is Kamala Harris is, is about as sharp, you know, 30 years younger, 40 years younger than uh, than Biden is now. I mean, it's it's I don't know what's what's better, you know, sort of cackling, <laughs> you know, coarse, you know, hyena who, who thinks that. <laughs> I mean, did you see what she said about about cloud storage? I mean, she she literally said that cloud storage is like because your data is stored in a cloud. It's it's in the air above us. I mean, this is this is totally disqualifying. What hap what happens, you know, what happens if that's live in front of the entire world watching? This is yes. one of the reasons that she's refused to agree to a Fox News debate. And only wants it, you know, on on super friendly terms. But frankly, I think they're afraid of giving her friendly interviews. I think that's why she's disappeared so much. Now, now part of the issue was I think Biden was so decrepit physically that it was uncomfortable for social media influencers and musicians and actors to pers to um, project that heroic, angelic, cherubic, you know, sort of fresh angle for him. I mean, there's only so stale a bagel can get before it just literally bounces, you know, when you drop it. And, uh, and I think you know, the, the Kamala thing is if they can just kind of airbrush a, a photo of her, like they did with Time Magazine, and so just be this thing you hear about and you see, you know, sort of Instagrammed, filtered pictures of, but never really see um, her without makeup, shall we say, in the morning, uh, uh, then then that gives that gives TikTok influencers something to project and inflate. That gives you know Instagram influencers something to project. That gives the media, uh, you know, a picture that that they can put on without you ever have having to hear the marionette's mouth move. So, do you believe that the intelligence agencies and their cutouts are running the Kamala Harris campaign along with what has been reported, uh, Barack Obama? I think it's being done through informal channels. Yes, I think it's being back channeled. And I should note, that's what Obama is doing now. I mean, look into the, the Obama Foundation. It is a classic one of these. Now, you know, I use the word CIA here being a little bit glib because there is a, there is this inextricable network around the State Department, USAID, CIA, and to some extent DOD in these things, which is that, you know, the Obama Foundation is you know, has this fellowship program where they produce these emerging leader programs who go into State Department or USAID funded NGOs and 
you know, formally that's not classified as intelligence work because in, in, in 1983, we made a change to the way that we, we structure intelligence work where we, we lace it through these above board public facing NGOs. But these are pawns on the chessboard of the Central Intelligence Agency. You know, you can't just script a coup from Langley. It's not like two dudes are in a Langley lounge at CIA headquarters and like, you know, I think we should overthrow the government of Tanzania. Okay, uh, cool. Let's like, uh, let's just put that in the gumball machine and okay, now the government's overthrown. No, you need assets on the ground to do it. And when the CIA looks around, well, what assets do we have to pull this, this off? What assets do we need to create? What, what instruments of statecraft can we use in this operation? They look at, and that the entities that are capacity built to do it and they get the state department and USAID to capacity build those organizations. Hey, people in this country don't believe X. We need them to believe this. They aren't affiliated with this political movement. We need to get them affiliated. Okay. The state department, we need you to fund a university system down there. We need you to fund a public health drive. That's going to recruit people. You know, when they come in for this, we need to set up 55 new independent news sites who all get, National Endowment for Democracy funding, you know, to do it. And then it's like, okay, now we have this robust chessboard in order to pull off this operation. And Obama is helping them set up that chessboard. Look at the Obama Foundation Fellowship Program. It is this international program that effectively grooms young, impressionable people from countries in geopolitical hot zones in order to run through the Yale network, to run through the USAID and you know NGO sphere, State Department, National Endowment for Democracy network, and then be you know sent back in to uh, to bring a little hope and change to countries that happens to align with the State Department agenda. You know that used to be called CIA covert action, but now it's called State Department public diplomacy uh, or, or democracy promotion. But it's the same thing. I mean. Corporate wants to, you to tell the difference between these two pictures. <laughs> the same picture. So, what are the what are the biggest hallmarks that prove to you that Kamala Harris is being centrally managed by these by these infrastructures and these cutouts the way they did Boris Yeltsin in Russia when he was incapacitated? Well, it's still a little early, to, and this is why I hedged it a little bit and why I said I think it's it's done informally through back channels. But you know, I I think that for example. You know, I said that the final signal for for Biden's, you know, um, tolling of the bell on his on his presidency was going to be a letter from the intelligence community, a la a kind of Russiagate letter, because they were doing this all over the Trump campaign. You know, whenever the IC wants to, he wants to send a message about about what's whose side the CIA and the Pentagon and the State Department are on. You know, they they assemble a, a kind of you know squad army of recently former, you know, CIA, you know, uh, State Department and Pentagon officials, you know, the guy who six months ago, you know, was was the undersecretary of, of public affairs at state. And now he's just a, in a civilian capacity, he's just telling you, hey, do this, uh, along with 50 other people. But, you know, when I saw that letter, and that was, that, that was less than 48 hours before Biden announced that he would drop out. Um, so, uh, so, I, mean, I, I do think that this um, what I'm what I'm communicating has prescriptive value. But but what I'm trying to communicate is when I see you know 50 CIA, State Department, Pentagon, USAID, you know people all come out and say that Biden needs to step aside and support Kamala Harris, and we're all supporting Kamala Harris. I say, well, okay, you have 50 people from across the intelligence community, including by the way, Rosa Brooks was a signatory to that. Rosa Brooks was the head of the Transition Integrity Project, which you and I have talked about many times. That was the domestic color revolution coup simulator. She was a high ranking Pentagon official with a CIA blue badge who uh, literally <laughs> pitched, you know, in, in, in this, uh, you know, in, in this coup simulator in 2020 that the Biden campaign would need to establish a back channel with Black Lives Matter to instrumentalize them as street muscle in order to be receptive to a call to take to the streets from the Biden campaign. To, to shut down the country if in case of a clear Trump win in the election. So when I see it's that same network that is backing Kamala, and it was that same network who was stage managing 
you know, the foreign policy affairs of, uh, of, of Joe Biden, you know, that's one hallmark. But remember, Kamala Harris was sort of being groomed for this job from the moment she got in. If, if you recall, she was, a, you know, I think one of the first senators ever in her first term you know, as, a, as a junior senator, effectively, to be elevated to the Senate Intelligence Committee, the most secretive uh, committee assignment in all of Congress. The Senate Intelligence Committee is the number one oversight arm of the CIA. And Kamala Harris was rushed into that before she was picked as Joe Biden's vice presidential uh, 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 candidate. And so she's been passed around in these networks, forgive the phrase, um, you know, for for some time now. And but, uh, you know, one thing that remains to be seen is will there be personnel um, commitments, personnel continuity uh, at the ODNI level and at the USAID level? Those are two things that I'm paying attention to in particular. That is, will she keep Avril Haines from the as as director of national intelligence? And will she keep Samantha Power as director of USAID? Uh, because th those, to me, are really the the most symbolic picks about whether or not there's any daylight between her and Biden on foreign policy. You said stage managed, and there was one time, there's been one time since Kamala Harris staged a coup. Can we call it this? This is a soft coup, all right? So Kamala, would you define it as that, Mike? Like soft coup against Joe Biden? Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. I probably wouldn't use it myself just because, you know, I mean, we saw what they did with like the transition integrity project thing was like, I mean, that was a, Rosa Brooks planned a color revolution. I mean, you're going to, you're going to get the Biden campaign to get black lives matter, to act as street muscle, to take to the streets, to shut down the country and do the same Rico crime that Georgia, you know, uh, rolled up 19 Trump attorneys for, you know, but this, I, you know, you could, you could maybe, maybe soft. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they nudged, they pushed him out. I mean, it was an intra party, dispute. It's, you know, and the fact is Biden still is nominally president, but I'm, I'm okay with that, that if you, okay. you want to you know, use it. Okay. I, we don't, we don't even think he signed that letter to be quite honest. So to tell you, tell you what our audience and where our stand is on this can't find Joe Biden's signature looking like that in any of the documents, but here we are. He so, wouldn't remember it anyway. Yeah, that's right. So you say it's stage managed. Uh, there's nobody who's needed more stage managing than Kamala Harris. Now, here's the clip now, no that you were talking about. Are you necessarily keeping those private files in some file cabinet that's locked in the basement of the house? It's on your laptop, and it's then, therefore, up here in this cloud that exists above us, right? <laughs> it's no longer in a physical place. It exists above us in this cloud. They sure can pick them, Mike. There's it's one time, I remember. to your point of stage manager, there's one time they let her talk. She's, she's spoken exactly one time without a script. And it was when some hostages were freed from Russia. And it went like this. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. It's, this is an incredible day. And you can just hear that you can hear the line that was given to her by the intel agents. You can hear the line that was given to her by the State Department, like being butchered. And then uh, to, to top it all off, Joe Biden just goes and wanders, just goes and wanders onto the plane. Biden, by Bi like the hostages are over there with their families. Kamala splits the difference and then Biden wanders up onto the empty plane. <laughs> it's, 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 it's great. It's Trump great. Really nailed it. This that, is that, tru that Trump quote where he just goes, you know, Kamala, you know, it's just, it's just funny. Just the way she speaks. What do you mean? It's funny. You know, when that Tucker Carlson thing, he goes, well, you know, the way she talks, uh, you know, the bus goes this way and then the bus goes that way because <laughs> that's just the way buses go. And it's like, she does that. With everything, it's like you can say absolutely nothing. I mean, you just you're given a buzzword phrase in a talking points memo the day before. You didn't do the homework. You're cramming for the exam. You're like, oh, I remember there was this word. How can I just do variations on this word and then hope we can run out the clock? And uh, that, you know, that seems to be everything. I, I wonder what she actually does all day, frankly. So, so Kamala Harris fake campaign being centrally managed. Um, is it going to work? What's your well, black pill or white pill here? Uh, I'm, I'm white pilled if the election is free and fair. 
I think that if if there's no fraud, I actually am am very bullish on uh, on Trump's prospects, um, which is which is that I think that Trump has much more support now than he did four years ago. I think that his campaign this season has been much more energetic, much more heroic, uh, and has a much louder megaphone than he's had than he had in 2020. I think that he's got a whole, he basically didn't lose anyone from 2020 and he gained an entire new armadas of interest groups coming to his side, uh, whether that is from, uh, you know, the, the Silicon Valley camp, Elon Musk, David Sachs, Chamath, you know, you now the, the Winklevoss twins, you have, uh, you have so many disaffected foreign policy groups who are, you know, just totally irate at, uh, at what the Biden Harris foreign policy has been, uh, you, you see it, I think reflected in culture and, and frankly, you feel it walking around being a Trump supporter does not feel like a, like a stigma or like a, you know, a kind of scarlet letter in the way that it did in 2016 or frankly, as it did, you know, uh, all the way up until 2020 and, and even, you know, even thereafter, you know, there, there has been a sort of, permanent calcification into a, into a hard bone of, of what, you know, Trumpism represents uh, in a way when, when that's, that's more solid than when it was less defensible and it was a primordial soup and it could have been, you know, um, hijacked a lot of ways. I think there's a lot of staying power now. And frankly, uh, you know, I don't, I don't believe polls, especially ones that oversample Democrats and that we know are done for uh, for political reasons, you know, I mean, I vividly remember what, you know, looking at uh, the election polls in 2016 on election day, uh, after I had already, I had a tremendous amount of confidence Trump would win. I was betting, you know, 50 different people on it and making predictive bets that Trump was going, even though the polls said the exact opposite, right? The New York Times had, uh, had Trump at 10% and Hillary Clinton at 90. And I think, uh, Slate or Salon, you know, had it like 98 to two on election day. But uh, the fact is, is everyone could feel what was around them and everyone could see how skewed the polls were. Now, and, and I also do think that some of the size of Trump's lead may have been overstated three weeks, you know, uh, in the three week period when they were trying to get Biden out. I think yeah. those, you know, the, they may have been oversampling Republicans in the polls that showed Trump way up over Biden in order to drive a sense of crisis into Biden's base that they need to jump ship. So, you know, I don't, I don't believe any of it. I think all you can do is build, 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 and, uh, and then, you know, have a diligent election integrity team in place, and then the chips will fall where they may.